Welcome to Local Matters. Today we begin in the arts. Local artist and educator Kendra Dangora is a force of nature who uses her gifts to teach younger generations the power of the art palette. Here is her story. Kendra Dangora is a fine artist, potter, and art teacher. We visited with Kendra in her native Plymouth, Mass, to learn about why art and teaching art is her life's work. I stopped in to chat with Kendra and some people who work with her every day. So Kendra, where do you get inspiration for your lesson plans? Um, I gain a lot of inspiration through Pinterest, um, through books, through the children and what they're interested in. Children inspire you? Yes. If they have a desire to learn how to draw animals or people. We go through a unit of that. What kind of art do you like to do um, when you're home? Does anything that you learn in this class um, inspire you to do art at home? I like to draw animals. My favorite animal is a fox. I a like, fox? I like how they have, the colors they have. I like to get them away from the commercial images of holidays so we did a unit on masks this Halloween and we talked about where masks originate from and how they're used in different cultures and then they were inspired to make their own masks based on their own interests. So, so these masks are all done by the students that are present in class? Yes, um, this pile here is fourth grade. I have it, I have it in um, in order. In order. <laughs> in order. So the fourth grade masks are here. At the what end would here. you say is different about teaching a kindergartner as opposed to a fourth grader? Hmm. 
<laughs> you all know the answer to that one. As they get older, they get more tense about what they're drawing. And oh, in okay. kindergarten, they have no inhibitions whatsoever. More self-critical. Yes, they become more self-critical. Middle school is even harder because mm -hmm. they just don't feel like they do it perfectly enough. Mm -hmm. Whereas there is certain freedom with preschool through second grade where they just do it. So what do you do as a teacher to let those inhibitions go? I make them scribble. Right, guys? Yeah. yeah. You make a scribble. Scribble all the time to loosen up their hands. As you see on the chalkboard over there, we scribble until we get the proportions right. Scribble, cones and circles, right? Yeah. Yeah. We are delighted to have her as a teacher at St. Margaret Regional School. The impact that she has on the students is just amazing. She brings the talent and the gifts out of each student when she gives them an activity to do. So I heard that you worked on a mural in Ms. Mm -hmm. Dangora's class. Can you tell me about that? So the mural is the, she painted this um, background sky thing on the closet doors out in the hallway and we were doing this rainbow thing when she like paints our hands and um, with some colors and she pushes it up against the wall to make it look like a rainbow with our hands. Hi Bria. Hi. Hi. So I'm interested, how would you describe Miss Dangora's class to another kid? Um, I feel like kids in the future who are in like preschool and stuff, I feel like I would say to them, if you're in Miss Dangora's class, it would be very fun, and um, I'd say you'd probably want to be an artist like her. It's important to have art in the curriculum in the school because it gives the opportunity for the students to share their creativity and to display their talents in various ways in the arts and it also gives the school an opportunity to display their artwork and it is an invaluable asset to the school. Why do you think it's important for art to be taught in the schools? I think art is really important to teach in schools because first of all drawing is a very important skill to learn. No matter what job you have, you're going to learn how to you, you need to learn how to draw of some kind, right guys? Yeah. yeah. We talk about that all the time. It's also teaching them problem solving. So if you have a specific project and they need to work something out, I encourage them to do that. I'll help them, but I encourage them to do that on their own first. And I think just the appreciation of art itself, the beauty around us. Sometimes we get so locked into the devices and they know how I feel about the devices. Yeah. But I feel that imagination and awareness and observation is a really important thing to have in your life because if you miss out on all the wonderful things that are happening around you, then one day you're just gonna be old and wonder where all that went. How about anything else you wanna say that is important for you? That I feel very lucky that I am a teacher of all these children. It's the best thing ever. And I'm thankful for that. To view more of Kendra's work, visit her website at ArtUrchin.com. Do your kids love reading and the outdoors? The Pembroke Public Library is bringing you the best of both worlds. 
from October 25th through October 31st, head to the library to take your little reader on a story walk. Follow a path through a fun and immersive reading adventure of Elaine Bicknell's book, The Little Ghost Who Lost Her Boo, with a stop at each page, some of which will have activities. Daylight hours are recommended, but feel free to stop by the library at any time during the week. No registration is necessary, but of course, masks are. Visit the Pembroke Public Library website for more details. Established during the mid-1700s, the small Duxbury village of Tinkertown was home to a booming shoe industry and a slew of historical characters. Want to learn more? On October 25th, join the Duxbury Rural Historical Society virtually as they present a video presentation from town historian Tony Kelso. After the presentation, take a drive through the village to take in the sights of this unique little corner of Duxbury. This event is free and open to all, but is limited to 100 guests. To register, visit the Historical Society's website. Do you own a DSLR camera that you haven't quite mastered yet? On October 27th, join photographer Robert Mickelson virtually to learn the tricks of the trade for taking breathtaking photos. This free course is recommended for beginners, but all are welcome. To register, visit the Plymouth Public Library's website. If you're a trivia enthusiast and a fan of all things spooky, this is for you. The Sharon Public Library is hosting a virtual horror-themed trivia night. Test your knowledge on monsters, mysteries, and more as you tag in your friends or family to make a team. Each team is asked to submit the number of participants and team name prior to the game, so be creative. To register, email allison at adrendal at ocln.org. On October 26th, ages 10 and up are invited to Monday Night Mafia, a social deduction game with a virtual twist. Use your sleuthing skills to determine who is working with you and who is working against you. To throw in another twist, participants will be given character roles from the hit show, Stranger Things. The plot starts to thicken at 6.30 p.m. To register, visit the Dover Public Library's website. Halloween may look a little different this year, but there's still space for some social distancing fun. On October 30th, little ghosts, goblins, and other candy seekers are invited to the Old Colony YMCA parking lot for trunk or treat. Enjoy festive decorations, a costume parade, and of course, all the candy. If you are interested in being a volunteer, spookify your car, stock up on sweets, and head over to the Y to join in on all the fun. Setup is at 4 and the event begins at 5 o'clock. For more information, visit the Y's Eventbrite page. Tiff and Erica are back with an all new Apps Untapped, and this time they're giving you tips and tricks on how to stay connected to friends and family through communication apps. Hi there, Tiff here again to bring you another episode of Apps Untapped. Now, this pandemic has me feeling a little isolated, so much so that I'm starting to lose my mind a little. More tea, Wilson? Since I have family and friends scattered across the country, and since we can't actually cross each other's state lines for the most part, it's been really hard not seeing the people that I love, which is something I'm sure you all can relate to. We humans, after all, are extremely social creatures. So today I'm gonna talk about communication apps. What is a communication app, you ask? Well, this is an interface that allows you to use video and sometimes text to chat with people you know. Now, usually I chat with y'all about one app, but today, since there's so many, we're gonna discuss two. Today we will be talking about House Party and Messenger Kids, two apps that will make your case of the lonelies go away. So you wanna have a party. But worldwide pandemics are terrible, and you can't have people in your home. But through the magical world of the interwebs, you can still have a house party. I mean, it's a virtual one, but hey, it's still a party. House Party is a face-to-face -face social network that allows up to eight people to chat together all at once. It makes multi-person video chatting super simple and actually really fun by creating a room for all of your friends to hang out in virtually. Let's talk about some cool features, shall we? 
After you sign up, there's a few ways you can get in touch with friends. You can call a friend, wave to a friend, leave them a face mail, you can chat with them via messenger, which in house party world is called passing a note, or if your friends aren't cool yet and they don't have the app, you can invite them. You can also use cool backgrounds. Not really quite sure why they're all food related, but I feel like the creators of this app get me on a very fundamental level. My favorite feature by far is the games feature. That's right, friends, you heard me correct, games. They got Uno, they got Heads Up, they have Trivia. They even have a game called Chips and Guac, which is like a generic version of Cards Against Humanity. One of the other perks about using this app is that it's free, like free free. So they won't be hustling you to upgrade, there aren't any ads that you have to watch, it's just you and your friends closing the distance through the magical world of cyberspace. So now that you know how to virtually hang with the bigs, we can now talk about how you can hang with the littles via Kids Messenger. I just want to state for the record, I am not a parent. I don't pretend to be a parent. It seems hard, and I couldn't even keep my friend Erica's plant alive while she was on vacation. So I'm not telling you how to run the show, I'm just showing you an app that's pretty cool. Messenger Kids is an app extension of a website you probably have never heard of called Facebook. It's like regular Facebook Messenger, but significantly more entertaining. Why do kids get all the good stuff? I don't know. Let's chat features. If you're a parent and you're concerned about your child's safety on the internet, that makes sense. The internet can be a wonderful, useful place, but there's also some scary parts. So when it comes to being online, privacy is everything. And with Kids Messenger, you pretty much have all the control. You sign up for the app through your own Facebook. So don't worry, your eight-year-old will not have their own Facebook account. When you're all signed up, the app will generate a code that you can send out to people you know. Mostly it'll be your kids' friends or sometimes just really cool aunts. But the important thing to know is that they are not gonna be listed anywhere, so no one will do a search for them. Now that we got some of that business out of the way, let's talk about the fun stuff. Like with House Party, Messenger Kids has games. Get into a drawing contest, grow a pet, or whack some cute zombies. Kids can play with one player or two. In addition to games, the app even has cool filters that you can turn yourself into a weirdo with. There are also other ways you can interact. Kids can record a voice message. Hey, Auntie Tiff, I hope you have a great day, and I love your dinosaur costume, and you're the best, and thanks for coming over. Bye. And send their wee friends colorful stickers and gifts. Is it gifts or is it gifs? Another bonus is that parents can control what times the app is being used for by using the sleep mode function. So if your little human has a bedtime of 8 o'clock p.m., you can go to your main Facebook and set the app to shut off at that time. You get all the control, just don't get drunk with power. Now that you have some of the nifty features under your belt, I'm going to provide you with a few tips and tricks I found when playing around with both of the apps. I want to mention a little bit more about privacy because your safety means a lot to me. Another privacy setting on House Party is that you can lock the room to make sure no stragglers get in because there's nothing worse than a party crasher. Oh, and another fantastic trick I found with House Party is that if you have a friend that you're really annoyed with and you're like, no, I'm not putting up with their nonsense, House Party actually has a function where you can mute yourself so the person can't see that you're on the app. All you have to do is hold down the HP icon and tap sneak into house. And yeah, it's kind of sneaky, but at least you don't have to deal with Rhonda's nonsense. Parents, I haven't forgotten about you. Ever curious as to what your kids do on the interwebs? I mean, other than playing hours of Animal Crossing. Well, on Messenger Kids, you can track your kids' activity on the app, but it's hidden, so I wanna show you how. Go to your Facebook settings, scroll down to Messenger Kids, click on the kid you wanna track, and go to Activity. Just another helpful tip to make sure they're not doing anything wacky like selling your house for $5 and a tub of Legos. So now you got the goods on communication apps. Fantastic. Listen, we are all living a weird life right now and it's easy to feel detached. If you're lonely, reach out to your friends, your family, your neighbor, or that lady from marketing. I heard she's pretty cool. But just remember, you are loved and this isn't forever. This has been another Apps Untapped. It's been great chatting with you. Be well.
With many regulations being loosened, Wildlands Trust guided hikes have returned. On October 24th, get your mask, water bottle, and some sturdy footwear, and head to the trails with volunteer and land steward Skip Stuck. Join Skip at the Old Field Pond Preserve where he'll teach you about some of our area's natural curiosities as you hike through the gorgeous landscape. The group is limited to 10 people and masks must be worn for the entire hike. To register, visit wildlandstrust.org. Sisters in Crime New England joins with the Pembroke Public Library to offer a virtual mystery-making improv event on October 29th at 7 p.m. Join authors Gary Braver, Judy Kopeck, Julie Henriquez, and Leslie Wheeler as they improvise a brand new mystery using prompts from you, the virtual audience. Fast-paced and full of brainstorming put into action, this unique workshop will give you insight into the mind of a mystery writer. And it will be a lot of fun. Visit the library's website to register for the Zoom link. If you grew up in New England, you've probably heard a lot about Lizzie Borden and the crime that made her infamous. How much do you really know about this haunting legend? On October 26th, join historical playwright and lecturer Sal St. George on a virtual road trip tour to the Lizzie Borden Museum. Learn about the setting of one of the grisliest murder cases in American history and about the controversial figure herself. To register, visit the Lizzie Borden Eventbrite page. Here's Erica with what's going on in the schools. Students riding the bus in Bryantville, Hobbamock, and North Pembroke should have come home with an instructional letter and an important code unique to their school to sign up for a new parent app called First View. This app will allow you to see your student's bus route and get an estimated arrival at their assigned stop. Please read the instructions carefully. Each school has its own unique code that should remain confidential. The instructions will also be on the Pembroke Public Schools website under the transportation section, but codes will not be posted. Parents of students at PCMS and PHS have received a separate email with the needed documentation. The schools are excited to be able to bring you this tool and hope it is helpful to you. Please remember your student should be waiting at their assigned bus stop prior to the bus arrival. Due to the pandemic and COVID-19 guidelines, the procedure to use the athletic training room has changed. The room for student athlete use is located across the fitness room in the athletic hallway of Silver Lake Regional High School. An athletic trainer will be located in the corner of the gymnasium during the peak hours of 2 to 3 p.m. Athletes should enter the gym to access the locker room, change into their practice gear, then exit to the rear of the locker room into the athletic hallway and out to Syracuse Way. Please wait on the sidewalk until you have been seen at the back of the door of the gym. There will be signs to direct you. Remember to take all of your belongings with you. Students who need the trainer and are coming from home may get dropped off or park at the Lake Street parking lot. Walk along the sidewalk up to the back of the gym to access the waiting area. Laker TV is back. If any student is interested in becoming a part of the news crew for the school, please email the Silver Lake Regional High School Librarian, Ms. Mathias, for more information. Due to the inability to stay after school, all filming will be done during school hours. This is a great opportunity for students to engage with current events in the school, as well as learning hands-on experience writing scripts, acting as an anchor, and filming. And just as a friendly reminder that if your child is experiencing any of the following symptoms or has a COVID-19 test pending, you must keep your child at home. Please feel free to call our school nurse, Ms. Fenson, at 781-585-3844, extension 1013, with any questions. Elizabeth, back to you. Plymouth Poet Laureate Stephen Delbos is back on the local scene with a new poem about the power of your vote. Hi everyone, this is Stephen Delbos, Plymouth Poet Laureate, and uh, I was asked by the Plymouth Area League of Women Voters to write a poem for, uh, to encourage voting in the upcoming elections. So this is voting poem for the Plymouth Area League of Women Voters, October 2020. A vote is a voice, to speak is a choice. In silence lurks fear, so let's form this year a braver chorus, you and I are us. Divisive belief is a thin fig leaf, concealing the fact that each human act reveals a deep bond. All those who respond to this and take note 
Remember, your vote is not a hammer. Instead, the stammer of public discourse may curve its slow course toward meaningful change if we can arrange our voices as one. Let justice be won. Vote for the voiceless. Vote for the lost. Vote for better angels. Thank you, Stephen. As we close today, we'd like to recognize a proclamation by Governor Charlie Baker about us, and not just us, PAC-TV, but community media centers across the Commonwealth. Governor Baker proclaimed Tuesday, October 20th as Community Media Day because, and I'm reading from the proclamation, the open and local exchange of information helps to inform our communities and encourage civil engagement. And access to information in today's diversified media environment is critical to the health of our local governments, charities, and schools. And community provides important local information that is not always available from regional and statewide media outlets. And in many communities, people are not aware of the diverse and valuable programming on public, educational, and government access cable, or streaming video, and podcasting. Thank you, Governor Baker. From broadcasting gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of important town meetings to shining a light on local stories and talent, community media serves as a bridge to your neighbors, your region, and the issues that matter to you. We believe, like you do, that local matters. Thank you for watching this episode. From all of us at PAC TV, have a happy and safe week. We'll see you next time. Thank you.